when you were saying earlier that you know with new creations that if you said give you a free brain do you mean sort of like that that just give you the name of what type of monster they want and you've got total free brain or just give you a rough idea that you know they want a wall, something that would live in the water or you know well, that's the big thing that I think has changed. I think our our era, it really was as simple as there's a line in the script and off you went. So it, would, it needs to look like a sea monster, it needs to look like a demon, blah, blah, blah. These days, you have an entire art department that will spend months doing either digital or traditional concept art, and that all gets fed up the chain to the executive producers and the directors, and, and they comes back down again. It's a design by committee, whereas I can remember, and, and you'll talk about this more than a doubt, I remember seeing, saying to Stephen, there is a Doctor Who story coming up with a big demon in it. If you have a big demon in your portfolio, when you go in for the meeting with J&T, you'll probably get that gig. So you sculpted a little maquette of the, of the destroyer in red, I believe. It was, it actually, it was a kind of, no, it was, it was immature, it was a kind of greyish colour. Yeah. Yeah. And it, Put that in the portfolio, and John went, Oh, what's this? And it's, it, it just put the seed in. And so you did design that deliberately, completely from scratch. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, 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 Mike's quite right. We did have a little bit of uh, private information, which was great. So naturally, when uh, John had asked us to go in and just talk about creatures and you know what thoughts we had and so on. And um, there was this demon. Susan had done one as well, which is slightly more alien and so on. And I, just because the, the nature of how things I prefer, I've done something more traditional. And he, um, I, I don't know whether he smelt a rat. He just must have thought, how come, how lucky, look, there's a couple of demons in here and we're, we're having one. And, uh, Half of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, like slightly suspicious, I'm sure. But, uh, um, yeah, and, and then they, they chose it. They said, I mean, if it, I mean, Ben Aronovich says he chose that. And James used to say he chose that. Uh, it doesn't matter which one, we went ahead and did it. And um, it, yeah, it was a little bit of, a little bit of luck there. But, but after, you know, even things like, say, Fifi, in, in, the, in the script, I'm not even sure it describes it as looking like that at all. And rather like Mike was saying, I'm not quite sure what I was even thinking. I wasn't even following what was in the script. It was like, oh, you know, I, what I couldn't work out is how is it supposed to look fearsome enough to frighten those pipey people or whatever? And how is it supposed to be so lovely mm -hmm. that this woman wants it on her lap, wants it near her? What, how, what are we going to So I came up with this, this shape. And I think there was a reference to it looking like a ferret or a rat or something like that. And then there's a, a vague element of that about it. But yeah, we were given a huge amount of freedom, which I, I well, as Mike would say, we wouldn't have now. Um, and so I wouldn't, I think we were lucky doing it when we did, really. Would you, would you, would you say in terms of, when you say design by committee, would you say that is now to the detriment of what comes out or you know, that, to, to lose that sort of personal freedom in the design? Do you find that hampers it in the long run? Uh, not necessarily, but the, the, there's kind of more layers of approval to go through now before anything is, is agreed. And, and I suppose, yes, maybe that can reduce any kind of spontaneous ideas. Um, it's, it's just different the way the, the show's made now. It's on a much bigger scale with, with more production people, more, more, more producers, more things that, that have to be approved before they can be given the green light. Well, I, was, maybe, I was thinking the other day, was, I saw a clip of something, I can't remember where I saw it, probably the internet, where they now, with new Doctor Who monsters, there's a kind of show and tell day, a couple of days before it goes to the studio, so at least any issues or worries can be dealt with before it arrives for the recording uh, two or three days later, which did not happen then, you know, often the first time everybody ever saw the thing was when it was everybody was working to such tight deadlines and all the writers and stuff like this. 
you'd turn up at the studio and sometimes, if you were lucky, you'd hear a, a kind of positive gasp. And sometimes, if you were unlucky, you'd kind of hear a, a, a murmur of, you know, well, what's that supposed to be? But it, it, it is so different. It was so, so um, I don't know, a little bit more raw. Mark Margo said when they tripped it, I asked it at this very stage, year ago, I said, what, did you, what was everyone's reaction when the triffids came out? Was it terror? And she went, everybody just fell over laughing. You know, until, until they were filmed like you did, she just said they were hilarious. Mm. Nobody took them seriously. Yeah, they look great. Well, a lot, many of these things really, uh, I get slightly annoyed sometimes when people knock at special effects in Doctor Who and they, they say, well, and they focus on one element. But, but for these things to work, everything has to work with it. It has to be lit well, it has to be performed well, you know, it has to, if you're lucky, it's in a good story. You know, all of these things all come together. And then you, yeah, everybody's like, well, what a wonderful thing that, that was. And rather like you're saying with the Triffids, it's it brighter, you know, once you see them, they're absolutely excellent and, and very original, aren't they, and so on. Um, but, it all has to work together. And if you're lucky enough to have a director who actually shoots it well and interestingly, and a lighting department that doesn't use the old rugby league lighting and just, you know, light it ridiculously, you know, a little bit of darkness helps sometimes. That didn't often happen, did it? I, you know? I mean, poor old Matt Irving still gets mocked for the Mirka in, in Warriors of the Deep, but <clears throat> Matt's up against two problems. They're, they have a, a, a quadruped monster, so effectively a pantomime horse costume. They, they cast as the operator of said monster a pantomime horse actor <laughs> from Mentigos. Uh, they're actors from Mentigos. He's told. Um, suddenly he gets a phone call going, we've brought the studio forward by two weeks. So he has two weeks less to build the thing than he had originally anticipated. And the lighting designer turns on every light in the studio. And he can't win. He cannot win. There's nothing he could have done in that situation that would have kept anybody happy. Other than saying, we're not delivering it, which you can't do. So it's one of the things I keep saying. Nobody ever goes out of their way to deliberately make a bad effect. You are at the result of circumstances and you do the best you can.